If you ever looked at the chart of Philo and got a serious case of FOMO, then this is the interview for you. Sidero Resources is a 16 million market cap as of December 12th company that IPO just this past September. They host an extremely compelling land package targeting multiple porphyry systems in the Vicuña Mining District in Argentina and Chile, which is the land of giants and probably one of the hottest mining districts in the world right now. You've got Filo del Sol, Jose Maria, and Lumina, NGX, all have these huge copper porphyry projects, so all in the immediate vicinity of Sendero Resources. Uh, just as a, as a start to this conversation, I just want to say there's already been a lot of strong coverage on this company, right? Justifiably, this company has caught a lot of people's attention, and so you can easily find a lot of coverage already. So my hope is that we maybe focus a little less on summarizing slide decks and, and previous news releases, and maybe just a little bit more in terms of asking questions around that content to maybe try to dig into the details a bit. But with that out of the way, uh, joining me to talk Sendero is Executive Chair Michael Wood, and I'm very pleased to have you on today, Michael. Matthew, How are you doing? Good. No, thanks for having me on, Matthew. Uh, great to be here. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. So, like I say, I, I've got a kind of a handful of topics I want to to get through today, but no place to start kind of at the beginning, right? Do you just want to provide us a, a brief overview of the property and the plan, your plans for it as of right now? Yeah, yeah. and I think, uh, you, you know, thanks for the introduction. And, and we're in a very exciting area, this this Vicuña district uh, slash Vicuña bout. We're, we're on what's formerly defined as the Vicuña bout. And we've got a big land package. We've got, we got 12,000 hectares, 120 square kilometers. We have a clustering of targets across this. And we're about to start drilling. Uh, actually, that we just started mobilizing, just put out a press release this morning explaining that the drill contractor went in over the weekend. The drill week will go in by the end of this week. And then uh, everybody downs tools for Christmas and then start, start drilling for a second week of January. So... We're now at a point, there's been a lot of work done, Matthew, behind the scenes. These claims were initially acquired in 2018, 2019, so you know, a long time ago, and now we're ready to drill. Uh, and a lot of exploration work has been done, a lot of preparation has been done, and we have now four drill-ready targets. We have multiple other targets that we keep advancing. So really exciting that we're seeing a clustering of these porphyry targets. And, Investors that understand porphyries know that they, the big ones come in clusters. And uh, a great data point is that 40% of the world's copper comes from clusters of porphyries in the central Andes. So Vicuña has been brought to light really over the last kind of four or five years by the great success that the Lundin group of companies have had up there and really started to show a clustering on their ground porphyry targets like you touched on. Filo in itself is a cluster. Uh, Jose Maria is close by uh, uh, Lunawasi is their new target that they're developing. They, they bought the majority stake in the Casaroni's mine, the only operating mine up there at the moment. And, and it's a very exciting district. And I think a lot of people feel it could be the source of a lot of copper to come over the coming decades. I mean, I even hear people saying centuries. So, you know, it, it's a great discovery uh, that's being made. And I think, you know, Asio Hernanvera is from the area and has really known about this since the mid 90s. He, he, friends, colleagues of his were up exploring on our property for El Dorado Gold in the mid-90s. Ruben was a was a corporate guy running uh, Anglo Gold Ashanti back then, ran Barrick and Yamana after that, and uh, you know privately bought this ground in 2018 and 2019. And, you know, we're delighted now to be Sendero, a public company, and about a drill uh, on the property on, on multiple targets. Yeah, you, you've touched on a couple of things here that I think are, are absolute kind of uh, positive positive aspects of your company, right? I mean, you have all of your above ground work done. Well, for the time being, right? You've got drill ready targets. There's so we don't have to wait for that. It's, it's I mean, you're a month, weeks away from drilling. Uh, you are isolated, but you have enough infrastructure to explore. You've got a road through the property, if I'm not mistaken. You you touched on. I mean, your your CEO Hernan Vera. I mean, maybe I might ask you just to and you you did dis discuss his work experience, but this I mean, this guy is obviously a huge boon uh, just in terms of his knowledge, expertise, and his local connections. Maybe do you just want to discuss Hernan a little bit, and then do you want to just maybe transition to, because the rest of your team is also remarkably strong too. Do you just want to kind of brag about your team yeah, a bit here? Yeah, no, no, great, Matthew. And yeah, Hernan is, is, has got a great pedigree of mining in Argentina. Ran, ran three major companies, uh, built three major mines, was on the board of Alan Brera, as well as the companies we just touched on, which was Glencore's big mine in in Argentina, one of the biggest copper gold mines in the world. So, you know, really very strong 
uh, expertise, knowledge, connections, exactly, in, in country. So, you know, really, when this project came to us, it was obviously a big tick to have Hanan as a local partner. Really, I don't think you could get a, a better local partner in Argentina than him. He's got extensive experience in the area. And, uh, yeah, great, great to have him. And then I think, you know, we like Hanan has brought in very strong local people. Uh, our in-country team is very strong from logistics all the way through to the exploration team. Uh, and then we have the oversight of David Royal, who's an Australian geologist, really a, one of the preeminent porphyry experts in the world. Uh, also done a lot of work in the Andes. He ran Newcrest exploration up in the Andes in the 90s. He ran Mount Isner, which became Extrada, which became Glencore, their exploration in the Andes in the 90s. So really great expertise in, in porphyries and, uh, and the Andes. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very strong team. And, uh, you know, I think that shows in the targets and the, and the prep work we've done. We're, we're not just going and drilling. We've done a lot of, lot of preparation. And, and I think what's exciting, Matthew, and we can touch on is what we found. Um, you know, we have outcropping diorite porphyries with intense potassic alteration. Now, uh, I mean, just to give reference point, the, the feeder hole that came out last week, you know, they had a, a zone, I was just looking at it before this, 44 meters of 1.8% copper equivalent. And they explained that this was in an intense potassic alteration zone, reshooted quartz veinlets and, and calcopyrite and borate. Now, we're finding this at surface. So uh, at La Pena at Tambaris. So it, it's beautiful to see. And, and I mean, in the summer, Dave shared with the team a great technical paper um, about these porphyries that have this intense potassium alteration outcropping, and they're very rare. Usually it's hundreds of meters deep. To name a few, Grasberg, Alan Brera, uh, and, um, and then Bitter, Bata Hedge out, which Dave was one of Dave's discoveries, actually. So, you know, they're very rare. They're three of the biggest deposits in, in the world that well, have been ever found, copper gold deposits. So to be finding this in two targets already on the property, you know, is very promising from a geological perspective. And I was explaining to an investor actually last week who was asking me, you know, how come you've got magnetic highs? You know, most porphyries that is a magnetic law. And you're just explaining to him that that's because the magnetite is outcropping. Usually you don't get the potassium alteration outcropping. Usually you have a cover, which is a magnetic low, and then hundreds of meters deep, you get this potassium mm -hmm. zone, which is a magnetic high. So it's beautiful to see. And I think, you know, We've got a great team, but we really have an amazing property as well. And, uh, you know, we can't wait to drill. Mm -hmm. We really can't wait to drill. I mean, Hanan has been wanting to drill for a long time. You know, we, we, we're there now. And, uh, yeah, it's exciting to be at this stage. Well, and that's, I think that's a natural segue. I mean, you are, I, mean, I touched on it, you and you did, you did as well. I mean, you're in the land of giants, right? These these massive, massive projects, of, you know, headline numbers for years you know, at, in terms of what they're pulling out of the ground. And like you said, you, you have this, this potassium alteration, which is a, clearly indicative of some sort of porphyry system. It's just a matter of drilling and finding grade, but uh, no no drilling to be done, right? I read your technical report in, in advance of this, and there was 10 or 12,000 meters on a separate target that you have, you know, that's not on your top three list. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, you do have a decent suite of geophysical uh, data, et cetera, et cetera. But can you just, why? I mean, I guess that's the question. Why, why has it never been drilled before? Why are these so obviously tantalizing projects still still uh, not been touched by a drill. Yeah, I, think I, I get asked that question quite a bit, Matthew, and I think you need to understand that even three or four years ago, Vicunia was not really a, an area of great interest for the exploration community. And it was perceived as a gap. It was perceived as very high, you know, with four to 5,000 meters above sea level. The, the district, we're about 4,000 to 4,300 on, on, on our property. And um, Two companies ha have done drilling on the property, Eldorado Gold drilled an epithermal system called La Jita, pretty systematic drilling back in the mid 90s. They had the property from 94 to 97. So a long, long, long time ago. Uh, and then Amer Anglo-American had their Western flank of our property and did pretty minimal exploration work. Um, you know, for Anglo-American, it was in a big suite of their exploration projects. Um, they, they drilled five holes. Uh, over the course of three years. So, you know, pretty minimal work. Um, I think for us, I mean, the, the going through everything, Anglo drilled a hole uh, right by one of our targets in Cerro de South. 
what we call the green whale tile, you know, so about itself. And they draw it south. And the interesting thing about it is they they did ground magnetics and they went and drilled without having their ground magnetics because they wanted to drill that field season. And if they had the ground magnetics, they would have drilled west and they would have probably had an amazing hole. So, you know, there's a few things like that. I think, you know, talking to El Dorado, they also wanted to drill Cerro de South. They set up a drill pad to drill it. Uh, and then, you know, they, they went off to Turkey. They discovered 12 million ounces in Turkey. You know, they, they kind of down tools in Argentina, knowing they had a slam dunk in Turkey. So I think there's been exploration. I think some people are going to be very close. Um, but, you know, the timing was was different. The, the resources that are disposable, even for Ang- Anglo-American, they didn't put a lot of resources into it for a big company. So, uh, yeah, good for us. Good for us. But, uh, yeah, good question, you know, why it hasn't happened. And I think, you know, Hanan bought the claims in 2018, 2019. If you got Dan, uh, the, the Lundin properties were all in one company. 2018, they split them up in 2019. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they've, they've all blossomed mm-hmm. really since 21, 22. So, um, yeah, it's it, it's moved on a lot, so it's it's good for us to be in this position. And yeah, people often ask me, you know, how do you get this land? They think it's so valuable, so rare. But if you go back a few years, the situation the situation was quite different. And that's, I guess, the advantage of having someone like Hernan on your team, right? Where, like you say, that 2021 was that big run up for Filo del Sol. I was just looking at that chart, and yeah, just uh, feeling some sense of loss and sadness. I wasn't in that one before this, and. Yeah, I mean, that started in 2021, as you said, right? So you, you front ran it by a couple of years, even though it was a quiet period. And I think it's such a good example of, I mean, any so many of these discovery stories end up big stories. It's a story of slipping through the cracks time and time again until it lands in the lap of somebody prepared to give it the, the due, t- due attention that it deserves, right? So I, I just I always like these origin stories. I, I do want to get, obviously, to your actual exploration targets because they are awfully juicy. But there's a couple of questions here to, to kind of continue to set the table here. Argentina. Obviously, if anybody knows Argentina, they know that the kind of jurisdictional strength comes down on, onto a, it's a federal system, so province by province basis. You are surrounded. I mean, like La Salta is one that I'm very comfortable with. I've got a project, a couple projects there that I follow and invest in, right? Uh, but you are in a, one that I'm not familiar with myself, La Rioja, uh, which itself has relatively little in the way of mining history. So just for, I guess, you know, people cautious of wading into unknown jurisdictions, do you just want to discuss how your relationship with the government has been so far? Yeah, sure. And I think that's part of the, the ability as well from Hernan to pick it up. Um, so, you know, it's not a mining jurisdiction. Actually, historically, it was a very good mining jurisdiction if you go back decades. But in recent times, it's not a mine jurisdiction. There is no mine in Arioca, not even close to a mine. They have some good lithium showings further north. They've got some good potential lithium deposits. First Quantum has a copper gold project further north as well. You know, obviously, one of the big copper miners is active in Arioca. Uh, but we really have all, all the ground in this Vicuni about in Arioca. So... Um, yeah, I think, you know, Hanan has experience working in La Rioja for Barrick back in the day and, and has some pri- other private projects in La Rioja. So it has a good relationship with the state. And they've really seen how particularly sound land to the south has boomed with with Vicunia uh, and with other projects in San Juan. San Juan has really advanced uh, uh, and, and become, uh, you know, one of the kind of growth states of Argentina. Actually, now it's a wealthier state than Mendoza, which is south of it, which was traditionally a lot wealthier than San Juan, and really on the back of mining. So La Rioja is definitely keen to come to the party, and you know they, they understand the potential and the team. right? And I think, again, it touches on the fact we have Hernan, the fact we have Dave Royal, people like this, they know that we're serious. We're not just coming in as, as, a, as a junior company uh, with no expertise. We're bringing world-class expertise to this exploration. So yeah, very supportive, you know, very supportive so far, really great relationship. And you know, I think they see that we could be their, their poster child and help them, you know, put put their state on the map for, for a mining jurisdiction. Mm-hmm. And just as a follow-up question, I mean, it, just in terms of turnaround time for for correspondence or permitting, what are you finding so far for yeah, the turnaround the, time? the dual permits guidance was the end of October. We got them October 23rd. So, you know, right, right on track, very, very good communication from the provincial government, uh, you know, very, very happy that the dual permits arrived as expected. So, yeah, I mean, now we have our dual permits in hand, you know, we're a long way, a long way off uh, mining permits, you know, so, well, more, at least I'd say three to four years. So very happy to, to have that key dual permit in hand and, and now look forward to, you know, multiple years of hopefully dual success before getting to that stage of, of looking at an exploration, uh, sorry, a, a, a production permit. Um, 
so yeah, it's 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 good to it's good to have had support and you know be be getting what we were kind of indicated we would get at, at the time of that indication. Mm-hmm. That's the best you can hope for, right? Is that they they give you what they say they'll give you when they say they'll give it to you, right? So. Um, just one more, and I guess this kind of circling back to to your neighbors, right? I mean, like you say, you've got the Lundines, you have these major, major discoveries and, and major, major companies. Has there been any sort of relationship with them already, right? On the one hand, data sharing or support to know that the, the Lundines have been helpful in one regard, they'll let you touch on. But then, you know, on the second half of that, you know, and I know you can't speak with any sort of detail or spe- specificity, but, you know, JV or buyout offers from them that maybe you've already rejected that you could kind of reference to? Oh, look, they're very supportive, I think. I think they're a lot more advanced stage than we are on multiple projects, right? So I think that they've got their hands for, you know, they're going to do their biggest exploration program ever at Philo in 24. I think uh, uh, the rumor is a production the announcement is imminent at Jose Maria. You know, they got now Lunawasi, mm-hmm. which looks an amazing new discovery. I think they're very excited about that. They've got lots of other targets as well on their ground. They, you know, they've got a lot more ground than we do. So look, they're very supportive of us. Uh, Hanan, Hanan meets regularly with the, with their local team. You know, they're very kind, letting us use the Jose Maria Access Road, beautifully maintained access road, 240 kilometers to, to the mountains. Uh, you know, they've been supportive with helping us with machinery last season when, when we needed a bit of help. So, you know, great support. I think, you know, they want to see the province, uh, the district of France, and I think they feel reasonably comfortable in our hands. You know, this package can be advanced and how advanced, you know, what is really that district. So, yeah, you know, good, good, good supportive relationship so far. You know, very grateful for that. And, uh, you know, as, as we advance, hopefully it continues. I mean, I, you know, I can't come in on the last bit. I don't know that you'd have to ask them what they think, but I think, you know, we're small fry compared compared to them, so I think they got bigger bigger things to think about than their Sandero resources. Yeah, fair enough. Eh? They got their hands full already with with success. Eh? Um, just two questions around share structure, and and and, and I mean, you've got six million bucks in the bank, sixty five million shares post RTO, twenty two million options and warrants between twenty and thirty cents. Which I mean, I think you know you and I were chatting. I think you're at twenty seven cents right now, so right around in there. 33% held by insiders. And so I guess a couple of questions just around this topic, right? Rather than having you talk through this, but just the questions I have on these. Are there shares held in escrow right now? And if so, when, when yeah, do they come loose? Yeah, there's two batches held in escrow. There's the founder shares that I think, and, and I, I have to check, Matthew, because I don't want to misquote here. Um, but it's, mm. um, I have to double check. But there's batches that come loose with that every six months. I know it's 800,000. Every six months, they come loose, so not a great deal spread over the three years. And then there's a 15 cent seed stock that was 5.3 million shares, and every three months, uh, basically a million shares of that comes loose. So it's not 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 too much, and gradually kind of fed out into the market uh, over the course of the first well, the seed stocks 12 months, the the, the founder shares are three years. So it, it's not it's not anything dramatic that's going to be hitting the market. You know, you got. 800,000 to a million shares in, in these tranches coming out mm-hmm. over the course of the well, the next three years. Um, so, yeah, very happy with the way the stock's traded. I think in a difficult market, you know, it's nice to be up in the green. I think there's good awareness. A lot of people watching the story and, you know, everybody wants to see drill results. So I think, you know, on any kind of meaningful drill result, hopefully our share price is a lot higher. And then we can, you know, have more resources at our disposal for, for a bigger drill program uh, in 12 months' time. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it is, I mean, it does, it does speak its testament to the conviction people, maybe people have about this, that uh, there has been churn, but there's been a lot of volume to absorb that churn. And, and, you know, I, I even think, I mean, I know that you've there, I just said there are options and warrants, 20 to 30 cents, you're trading 20 to 30 cents, and you're really not seeing the collapse that you sometimes see in this regard, right? So maybe just a question to have around there. Do you have any notion of, are there warrants being exercised right now? Can a little bit of, or not, a little bit of warrant clipping going on? Are you seeing money come into the a treasury right now? A little bit right of now, the or? 20 cent finders warrants have been, sorry, finders, finders warrants, not finders warrants, uh, have been exercised, but not a great deal, yeah. Matthew. I think it's about twenty-five thousand dollars so far has come in. But that's nice. Nice that people are exercising, you know, the twenty cents, giving giving money to the company. Uh, so yeah, I think um, you know, I think unfortunately, it's hard. I mean, it's it's really hard to gauge where the selling comes from. Uh, most of it is actually hidden. If you look at the, it's anonymous trading, so people are covering their tracks. Yeah, it is fine. It's uh, you know, obviously they're stuck. They can do what they want with it. So. Uh, it's it's okay. I think you know. I, I just want to keep seeing us tick up uh, into drilling, and then you know, on the back of drill results, I think it will be a lot more than a tick. So um, 
yeah, pretty happy, pretty happy with the mm-hmm. trading. And definitely, you know, I think a lot of good supportive shareholders coming into the story. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it seems like there is some sticky fingers. And, and I mean, yeah, in, in this market, your chart is about as good as it gets. I know that on our phone call last week, you were hoping, you were, you said you wanted it to be more because of course you do. But I mean, I think that for, for the, in the context of the macro section or sector, you've, you've done rather all right, right? So like you say, but we're all here for drill results anyway. The rest of us is kind of noise in the meantime, right? Uh, so, and you, I think let's transition and actually talk about your targets. I think you said you mentioned that you brought up, you created just a bit of a slideshow just to kind of help us through this. But why don't you, do you want to just a, kind of a brief overview of your current targets and, and maybe just discuss a little bit of geology, where you, what you're targeting, kind of zones, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, just yeah. if you want to bring up yeah, that, let me just share that my slideshow. Slideshow, Matthew. So, sure. Yeah. yeah, great. So no, thanks, Matthew. Are. So this is just a brief intro. Of, I, I think we've ca- kind of covered all this, the, you know, the, the land package in Bakunia, the team, the, the capital structure and the kind of entry point that we're offering to investors at this stage after a couple of months of trading leading in, into drilling. And then just put together a few slides from, from the corporate presentation, not the whole thing. But I think a, a key data point to touch on is this Bakunia bout. And this comes from a paper that came out in May this year, formally the defining this Bakuni about. And if you look on this slide on the right, we just annotate it. This is from the paper by uh, Richard Silatov. Uh, you can see that the light gray area in the background is the Bakuni about, and that package is a red, and then the green is the Lundin group of companies. And what Silatov explains in this paper is mm-hmm. that this is a pretty unique geological setting where you've had extreme telescoping. Uh, and what telescoping means is in the standard um, epithermal porphyry model, a porphyry will develop on average kind of two to four kilometers below surface. You get an epithermal system developing about a kilometer above that. But what happens is you get erosion, you get some uplift from moving them around. But what's happened here on this Vicuni about is you've had rapid uplift, rapid erosion at the same time, producing what's called a telescope porphyry, where the epithermal system and the, and the porphyry merges into one ore body. So that's what all the Landine discoveries have been. That's what we believe our targets are. Definitely La Gita, where most of the historic drilling was done, we're confident to already say that's a confirmed porphyry, uh, telescope porphyry system. We be, believe Tambaria is just south of it as well, but also be a confirmed telescope system. And really expect most of them to be. Once we start drilling, we'll start to find that mashing of epithermal and porphyry mineralization into one. So, you know, very unique geology and really exciting, as we touched on it earlier, uh, on this clustering. Right? There's our, you can see all the targets here that Silito has highlighted. And you see, like touch on the Lundines have so many targets uh, on their property. They've got a lot on their hands already. So, you know, very interesting geologically. Great to have such a large position of this, you know, 120 square kilometers. Just now zooming into our property. These are four targets that are drill ready for the season. La has been upgraded to do the field work so far. You know, we've, we've got a good epithermal system there. And then the field work we've been doing, we're getting your belief. I just want to get it confirmed by the, the ground magnetics and the IP where we believe the porphyry center is below that. So you know, very exciting there to add that into the mix. And then the other three targets have never been drilled. Uh, we touched on several days south, Anglo-American drilled to the west of it, uh, but never drilled here. Tambarius is, is a beautiful looking target with some good grade at surface. Uh, great potassium alteration like we touched on here and at La Pena outcropping, which is extremely rare. So some very strong targets that we're really excited to be to be drilling in just, a, well, just under a month actually. So. I just wanted to touch on this, Matthew, and this is the classic porphyry model as we touched on. The kind of bonanza prize is this. This is the uh, potassic core. Right? So this is where you'll generally get the high grade copper gold uh, deposits uh, with some molly thrown in. Now, the beauty of what we're finding is that we've got this outcropping, right? This is extremely rare. And like we touched on, there's only a few, right? there's probably others, but there's some very, very big, very well-known Grasberg, Annabro, et cetera, which had this. So it's great to be seeing that. You know, we, we haven't even drilled these targets yet, so it's still very early stage, but very, very promising to have that. And a good indication, you know, that you're going to get very good grade right from surface, which obviously in mining is a great advantage. If you've got, particularly at La Pena, where we basically have, a th- um, it's about 300 meter high structure, it's a mountain with a potassic core coming out the top and out the sides. So we believe, you know, we're going to have pretty good grade right from that with basically zero strip pressure which is, you know, that's why it's our number one target. That's why we're going to start drilling there. But just wanted to highlight that, you know, generally this potassic core is very deep and it's hard to find. You know, you'll find a lot of porphyry companies and they're looking for it. They're looking for the potassic core. You know, we've got good, uh, we've got good ideas. We've got some good grade around it. 
you know, we want to find this potassium coral. That's kind of the bonanza target that, that porphyry explorers want to find. So to have it outcropping you know, is rare and obviously very beneficial for an exploration uh, process. So if, if we move on to La Pena, uh, this is where we'll start. The first two holes will go into this. It really ticks all the boxes. And what, what we found here, and we just go through the main things here, the geology, the alteration, the mineralization, the, the, the geophysics, the geochemistry, and really all, all, all lining up beautifully. So if we look on this first slide, uh, the image on, on the left, Matthew, a key thing to understand about the geology in Vicunia is that the trend is north-northeast. This is the regional trend, as we saw in the Silito image, up towards Marikonga. And what the Landeans discovered in all their deposits is that you get these reverse control structures. And you can see here, we've got these two beautifully north-northeast defined reverse faults. And then where they had crosscuts, generally northwesterly crosscuts, they got the ore bodies, right? So here we've got a, a northwesterly crosscut and a, a one at the southern part here as well. And here we've got an outcropping diorite porphyry, which is this, this mountain here, about 300 meters high. There's a couple of people on the side of it to give them some perspective of the size of this. We've just got a nice example here of kind of classic porphyry type A, type B veinlets. So here you've got the potassium alteration, the, the, uh, the cave out spar. We've got magnetite, biotite at surface, really everything you want to be seeing. We also have the classic, we don't have an image of it here, Matthew, but we also have the classic Marikunga sheeted quartz veinlets, as, as was described in the phyllo, the high grade phyllo zone. So really beautiful to see. Uh, really, everything is aligned here and very excited to start drilling. If we just go to the next slide, oh, just talking on the alteration actually, you know, the, the potassium core, this is really beautifully classically zoned. So, the potassium core, and we have another slide that actually highlights this a bit better, but really coincides with the outcropping direct porphyry. And then you get the core epidog peripheral, which again is kind of classic porphyry alteration zoning. So, beautifully kind of textbook uh, model here, the alteration. If we move on to this next slide, here we have the, the, the bullseye geophysics, right? And this is what we kind of just touched on, where you get this very hot, the mag high. You know, it's very rare to find this. Most, most footprints of a porphyry would be more like the green, where you get a bit of high, but you've got the cover that is, that's covering that magnetic high, which is generally you know, hundreds of meters deep. But here it's literally outcropping that surface. So you've got a nice, what they call bullseye kind of textbook uh, uh, zoning. You've got the low. It's also kind of referred to as the pole. Uh, so you, it's very classic as well. You get a low anomaly going straight into a high. Uh, and, and beautifully zoned with, with, with the geophysics, the ge geology, uh, and you know, it, it's, it's, a great, it's a beautiful looking target. So this is where we'll start. Uh, you know, the, the first drill holes we just re we announced actually today on the next slide that will go, this, this is the Google, Google Earth image. You can see the outcropping here at the top. And this is just a, a textbook example of what we've done from the from the from the alteration. You can see a beautifully potassium zone coming right up to surface, uh, and this is where we'll start drilling into the one hole into the into the eastern side, one hole into the western side to start to get a sense. But this whole thing, and we believe actually it dips down going north. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it seems to be controlled within these parallel reverse faults. And what we want to understand is we believe the old body's dipping. So although we're getting more cover here, what we're hoping to find is as we start drilling it, that you know it's extending at depth as we go further north. So this is target number one, Matthew uh, La Pena. Um, now, the second area where, where we'll drill, we've really got two targets within one bigger zone. And this is really opening up the potential clustering that we have on the property down here in the in the southern part. Tambarius is on the eastern part and Cerro itself is on the western part. And you can see we've got outlined here, big circle structure. The whole of this is, is volcanic host rock. We believe it's actually a collapsed a stratovolcano, which again, if you go back to the classic porphyry model, it actually has a volcano on the top. So you go volcano, epithermal, porphyry at death. So we believe it's the collapsed volcano here. We've got, again, got the same regional structures uh, north northeast reversed uh, parallel faults here at Cerro de South and Tambores, a bit more of an east northeastern slant here with northwesterly cross cuts. And this is just from surface work. We believe as we do more, we've actually geophysics is highlighting a, a northwesterly cross cut here as well in Tambores, just below the kind of main target. Um, so, beautiful, beautiful big area. Focus on these two areas here, but there are a lot of intrusions coming through these volcanics, really. Is, as the team's explained to me, this is a classic setting for a major porphyry system, uh, what we have here in this in this big circular structure. So 
focusing on the western part, so really south, um, we, we've got three main targets. We'll start drilling in the southern target, the, the southern target, and, and really everything is aligning again. The, the alteration, the, the minimization, again, we've got the, 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 the mixture of the, the, here we've got an example of, of the sheeted uh, veinlets, but we've also got the porphyry classic stock work system. Um, we have, the, um, again, we have big alteration. This is just from the aeromag. We don't have the results back at the ground mag here yet, which is being done. But you can see a big magnetic high here, same up here. Uh, and and we, we have the ground magas touched on from Anglo-American coincides here, here, and then we have two others over here. Uh, and the northern one is what we call the green whale target, and literally it's around, it's uh, around here, and Anglo drilled a hole basically right down the side of it itself. So actually on this, actually on this, uh, sorry, Matthew, on this image at the top here, this is the target here. And Anglo put a hole right down here. So, you know, we're, we're going to prep the hole to go right into the heart of that. So a, a beautiful, beautiful area. Uh, and, you know, if we can start to show a clustering here, you know, La Pena is great. It's a great standalone target of size in its own right. It's about 800 meters long, 600 meters wide, you know, depth to be determined. But we believe already from the manus we have at least 800 meters deep. Here we have the potential to cluster which, you know, adds an extra dimension to the amount of mineralization you could be finding. Um, so moving over to Tambarius, this is on the eastern part of the property. A lot of work has been done here actually over the last 12 months, Matthew, and this has really kind of stepped up and is where we'll drill second. We have, again, an outcropping uh, direct porphyry with intense potassic alteration, some great court, uh, stock working of, of, of quartz uh, veinlets. We have calcoporite and bornite at surface here, two great copper oxides, again, that we're finding at surface, right? So great to be seeing that at surface and really adds to the potential of high grade here at Tambarius. Um, if we move down to the, the next slide, this is just the magnetics. We, we have done ground magnetics and IP here yet. Yeah, don't have the results yet. We'll have them out shortly. Uh, but we have the magnetic high from, from the aero mag. This has been done with more detail, the ground magnetics confirming the area. But what we want to do is basically put a drill, the initial drill hole will go straight into the heart of this outcropping direct porphyry, uh, intense uh, potassic area. If we move on to the next slide, this is just mapping out the, the alteration. So you can see here that the, the pink is the potassic alteration, beautifully zoned again uh, with the chloride sericite alteration around it. We put in a couple of trenches actually, Matthew, to the east of it. And we got a really nice breccia kind of around here. We had about 33 meters of continuous breccia surface with some very good gold, copper, and some silver grade in that surface, which is also very interesting. So great to be, what we're finding as well is breccias all around these porphyries, which is great to be seeing. And breccias can be a great host of mineralization. And, and the Lundines have had a lot of success in breccias, particularly Freelock. There's some great breccia zones there. So mm -hmm. that's, again, great to be seeing. So th these are the, the three targets that are all prepped, ready to go. And then Lajita still has a bit of work to be done before we finalize where it's at, we'll start drilling. But this is where most historic drilling was done. Uh, and there's some good drill results. This was just done in a very different period where Pecunia was a very different you know, location. So you know we, we, we know there's a decent epithermal system here. Adorado Gold was only looking for the epithermal. They, you know, they were focused on gold back in the mid-90s. But they started to hit some direct porphyry, dyadic porphyries in some of the deeper parts of these holes. Potassic alteration was coming through from the logging. So we definitely want to get a better understanding of that and, uh, you know, targeting. Really what we want to see is, you know, where the porphyry center is underneath this epithermal system. And there actually could be multiple porphyries here. This epithermal system was drilled over 2.2 kilometers of length. You know, they're hitting epithermal mineralization over, over that area. So a big, big area. And if we can start to define below it, porphyries and that really adds to a big big system and a big de potential deposit so this has been upgraded and we're getting ready to drill and i'm just pending these these ground geophysics before we define where exactly we'll drill uh, the lajita for this year so that's matthew i think a pretty good overview of the targets um maybe with that we uh we just jump back to uh to to the chat <laughs> yeah, no, perfect. Thank you. That's a good little, nice little, little detour. No, and I think that that is a perfect little five minute uh, segue there for us. Just some some follow up questions I have. Some of these were on my list, and some are kind of just popping up as I as I was listening to you. I mean, first of all, I know you've answered this one before, but I think this is one of those ones where maybe it is worth beating this drum again. Uh, La Pena, in particular, that I mean, well, let me preface this by saying that I really enjoy. And this is something I look for with my pre-discovery explorers. 
is that you're a working geological model, you know, steeped in data. And I mean, and you have, you know, your comparables just down the road that you, you have a, a known geological model, like the field of solar or whatever, that, that has these, that you know what to look for and you know what success looks like. And you're taking that data and bringing it with you. So when you talk about like that stock work, North, Northeast trend, then with the, with the westerly kind of uh, intersections or the faults, I mean, that, I think this is where it starts to get exciting for me. And so I guess maybe my, the question I have then off of that is, so for the Pena, I mean, the size of the anomaly compared to your neighbors, how does that fit in, right? You said, I think it was 600 meters or something. How does that, how does that uh, match up with, with your neighboring, those, those neighboring giant discoveries? Yeah, and, and, like, at the moment, what we have, so I'm covering it, surface is about 800 meters by 600. Now, that's big uh, in itself. Hopefully, it actually gets bigger as we go down. You know, there's, once we start coming through the cover, uh, to have that kind of outcropping it, it is, is you know, quite rare to be so big. But yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's comparable to definitely Jose Maria. Uh, I, I don't think probably the size of Philo. You know, Philo, I forget what it is. I think in total, it's about six kilometers long. You know, that's a real monster. So it's not comparable to that, but definitely in, in scale to kind of Jose Maria, I think it is a better is a better guy. But definitely if we start to, to prove up down at Cerro de South Tamburi as the clustering, then we that's a whole different level of, of size. But La Pena, yeah. I, I mean, a few people, I think, have ran some some resource calculations. So, you know, really back of the envelope stuff, we haven't even drilled it. So, but it would be a, it would be an economic deposit in its own right at relatively low grade, I think. You know, what, what we're after is at least half a percent equivalent. We're aiming for a percent equivalent, um, but we feel as long as we're finding half a percent equivalent, that then then you know that's in business for for developing it to be a deposit. But they're going a kilometer down, and so they need grade in a, in a way that is not such an essential thing for you, right? And, and so I think this is a, another another reason why I think Sendero is such a compelling thing. Um, this is. Let me just talk about your drill program you have upcoming. Forty five hundred meters. Uh, you know, these are going to be relatively deep holes. Is it five hundred meters or so per right. hole? The, the, the Pena will start off with a five hundred meter hole, Matthew. But in general, more kind of like three three fifty. Uh, but we're definitely going to be reactive, right, to the core that's coming out. And as we start to understand these deposits better, we, we'll be reactive. So, yeah, initially program two 500-meter holes into La Pena. But that, that again, there'll be some, you know, we'll, we'll be, you get a pretty good idea once the core starts coming out on these systems, you know, if you're in the right kind of zone uh, and, and roughly kind of what the grade is. So, yeah, the two, two 500-meter holes planned into La Pena first. Then we'll do a 350 or 500-meter hole into Tambarius as a second hole. Uh, and then, you know, what, what, what we'll put into Cerro de South is kind of in that region as well, kind of 350. It, it's kind of programmed for those, those three holes. So, but like if we're at 350 and it's still looking good, we'll probably keep going. So, uh, you know, you know what it's like. This you, you, need, you should be reactive, right? You shouldn't just be, okay, we're doing a 500-meter hole. If you drop 250 meters and you haven't anything, you should probably stop. I mean, <laughs> particularly at La Pena, right? We have, you know, the indications are it should be good from surface. So we'll be reactive to, to, to the drilling. And, you know, we've got a great geological team that knows what they're looking for. And uh, I think the key thing for us is to make sure that this initial drill meterage dollars are used wisely. So, you know, we'll definitely be very tuned in to the core and, you know, keep tinkering with, with the program as we go. Yeah, and I guess that's the nice thing, you know, what, what you're targeting is fairly telling visually. And I guess that was my question, right? You know, the balance between technical and scientific exploration and economic discovery, right? I mean, the kind of question I had that you kind of already answered is, you know, if you're if you're 500 meters down on the Pena and, and you are still in mineralization, do you keep going and sacrifice another target, or or do you kind of maintain that that that, and you already answered this, right? Or, or do you stop to maintain that ability to gain that geological subsurface data elsewhere, right? And so, I, based on what you said, it sounds like you know, you if you find success, you're not going to cut it off. You'll just keep chasing. Yeah, I think right. You and the Pena, well, you know, Pan put a 500 meter hole in it first, and, and we'll see. Like you don't really, you, you have an idea, right? But until you actually get an essay back, it's still just an idea. So mm -hmm. I don't think you know if it looks great. I don't think we'll just go and drill a you know a ki you know, kilometer or something on the first hole. I think we'll do five, and you know, if it ends in mineralization, fantastic. Um, so yeah, it's it's. I think you know, it's beautiful to have so many good targets. It really gives me a high level of confidence that we will get good holes from hopefully you know multiple of these targets. But as long as we get good holes from one, then I'm quite comfortable that the company's heading in the right direction.
Um, but, you know, the team is very confident we should get good holes on all of them. So if that's true, you know, that, that would really put us in a great position. Yeah, and off to the races, eh? So uh, turnaround times, I always find that South America seems to have Canada beat in terms of lab turnaround times. What is what is that expectation for you for you know, from the time that you get the assays cut and bagged and shipped? How long till you see yeah, Hopefully results? pretty quick, Matthew. With, there's a lab in Mendoza, Alex Stewart, that does most of the work for the area. So they're very good. We've got a good relationship with them. They, they're good on the turnaround on, on, the, uh, on the samples, but, you know, uh, surface samples that we take. So... I think we're hopeful that, you know, we can get stuff out kind of w- within a month. You know, you've got, obviously got logistics to get, you know, to get what, what we'll do is we'll log and we'll assess it at site. Then we'll take it down from site and, and actually do the sampling and then send it off to the lab. Um, so, uh, you know, it, there's a bit of logistics in there. But I think what we're aiming for is, yeah, it, by the end of end of April, I, I would love to, sorry, sorry, end of February, <laughs> I would love to have out some initial results before that kind of PDAC window. I think that's doable. If we start, you know, end of the first week of Jan, then hopefully by by late late February, we, we're in a position where we can get out some initial results. We, we expect the turnaround should be reasonable, Matthew. I think, you know, two to three weeks from the lab once we get once we get the samples in. Perfect. Like you say, nice, maybe an opportunity for a nice little PDAC party there. So that'll be good. Good results for that. Maybe the the legendary PDAC curse won't won't touch you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess honestly, I think that kind of circles around to the end here for me. Uh, do you just want to? I mean, final thoughts to Michael or, or kind of forward looking catalyst. Otherwise, that you wanted to talk, to touch on or let's know. Thing drilling, Matthew, is, is you know the key thing. We know we want to get drill success and show people these great targets have good grade. And I think it'll be very easy to decipher with, with already the prep work we have done, particularly in the Pena. If we start to show into this anomaly, you know, it's mineralized, decent grade, then it, it, it becomes pretty easy to kind of define an ore body there pretty quickly. So that's what we, we, we want to do. You know, we want to move forward and, and we've got a big property. And I think um, yeah, we will see how many of these targets we can advance towards an economic deposit. Uh, but that's our aim, right? We know we we want to move to a position where we're there, and, and uh, you know the the hurdle to be an economic deposit now in Vicuña is a lot lower than it was. You know, most likely, there will be two mines operating there within a relatively short period of time. So it's not like we need to go and get a big deposit where we need to go and build all the infrastructure ourselves. Like touch on, there's already good infrastructure in the district which is developing, and I think there will be a lot of deposits found there, and probably most of them will go into what probably what one, two, three mines. We'll see how it plays out. But uh, there's definitely a lot of synergies. And as you know, in, in mining infrastructure is a key part that I think is often overlooked. The, the, the whole point of exploration is to find a, a, an economic deposit that's going to make a mine a good money, that some miner is going to want to be willing to invest in and then mine for decades. Uh, so, you know, it's 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 a key part if, if you don't have to spend hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, putting the infrastructure in place. So again, we've benefited from the development of the area. And that definitely helps us, you know, be in a position where we can find these economic deposits. Uh, you know, we don't have to go and find a monster to, to, to be in business where I think when El Dorado were there, they did. Uh, so, you know, times have kind of changed. So yeah, I think, you know, we're, we're really excited. If, you know, great to be out as a public company and great to be getting out awareness of you know, who we are and what we're doing. And I think the opportunity that Sendero presents to investors at this stage, like you touched on at the start, you know, it's not without its risk, but on success, on exploration success, you know, if you've invested at this point, you should have made a really nice return on the back of that exploration success. So yeah, we you know we're looking forward to drilling and looking forward to getting out results uh, throughout kind of the first half of 24. We'll drill to the end of April. So, you know, I think there'll be multiple batches of drill results coming out of the first half of, of 2024. Yeah, exciting stuff. Uh, you can say it's a, an opportunity that is rare to come come across, right? A, a junior with a tiger by the tail, potentially. Uh, Michael Wood, Sendero Resources, senderoresources dot com. Yeah, great story, and I, I mean, we have a exciting few months ahead of us, and I look forward to following along with you guys. Thank Thanks you for your time, Michael. Cheers. Have a good night.